Welcome to Ferg Vision. Watch with us today as we take a look at our process for slow motion editing. Let's get started. Our first step is going to be to offload footage from our camera to our computer. In our case, we've shot most of the clips for today's project using our iPhone 7 and Filmic Pro. So we'll transfer footage first from Filmic Pro to our computer, then to our editing program. Because that can take a little bit of time, we've already completed this, so if you want to know how that's done, click the link in the description down below. Before we start editing, we feel it's really important that we understand one of the basic things that allows us to view video and film at all, which is essentially frame rate. To explain what we mean, let's go back to the 1930s. Persistence of vision is the principle which makes movies possible. A motion picture is really only a fast series of still photographs that overlap in your mind. Tracings of two of these still photographs, placed one on top of the other, show that each of the two photographs has caught the press in a slightly different position. Here is the way the first photograph looks. This is the way the second photograph looks. Now let's take the complete series in rapid succession. Faster. Persistence of vision makes us see two pictures at once. As a result, there is an appearance of motion. Okay, so far so good. We hold images in our mind a fraction of a second after we see them, so because of this, we can simulate motion with a rapidly displayed series of images. Pretty good. So for this next part, the narrator will talk about a strip of film. For the rest of us shooting digital, it's best to imagine this as a strip of video stretched out on our editing program's timeline. Now, with that in mind, let's get back to the film. So motion pictures are just still pictures joined together on a long strip of film. The more still pictures we get while the action is going on, the smoother it looks. If we want to slow down the motion of something that goes fast, we speed up our camera and make, say, five times as many pictures per second. We have slow motion when they are shown on the screen at normal camera speed. And just like that, we have slow motion. Just by increasing the number of pictures or frames per second that we capture, then playing them back at normal speed, we can create smooth slow motion. Because of this, we feel it's very important to choose our normal camera speed before we start any project. For us, we typically pick 24 frames per second unless our project necessitates otherwise. As an added bonus, most cameras, much like our iPhone 7, typically shoot at their highest resolution at 24 frames per second. Because higher frame rates require more data to be captured, often cameras will capture higher frame rates at lower resolutions. It's important to check your footage before you go to shoot your next big project. Take a look at it in your editing timeline and make sure that it looks just as sharp as it says it is. For all other footage, we'll choose our frame rate based on our intended use during editing. 60 and 120 frames per second are great choices for cinematic slow motion and B-roll, while 30 frames per second is great for matching with 24p pretty closely and smoothing out movements with gimbals, sliders, and dollies. So now we understand the what and the why, let's get back to the how with Final Cut Pro. Our project's frame rate in Final Cut Pro will represent normal speed, so we'll choose 24 frames per second when creating our projects. As an example, I've created a project using footage shot of my dog Reagan, as well as other footage I shot of animals on vacation. Now, check out this clip here, which was shot at 60 frames per second. Notice how it plays out in real time by default. If we want to slow our clip down to match normal camera speed, we can select our clip, then go to the Retime Editor, and click Automatic Speed. The clip will automatically stretch to match one frame in the clip with one frame on the timeline. The Automatic Speed command is our most used retiming command right behind the Retime command, which consists of clicking your clip and hitting Command R on your keyboard. This will bring up the retiming bar, which easily lets you slow down footage by dragging it to the right, or speed up footage by dragging it to the left. This is where we go back to our foundation, frame rate. 
Well, footage shot at 120 frames per second will play at normal speed on our 24 frames per second timeline. It'll look jittery and digital to us and to most other people. Now, 60 frames per second is a pretty good compromise. It looks decent when played at normal speed, but also gives you a great range to slow down in the editing room. Back in Final Cut Pro, we'll take a look at some of the other edits that we can perform with our high frame rate footage and the retiming editor. We can create a hold or freeze frame simply by choosing a point in our clip, then selecting hold with our retime editor. We can adjust the hold by again clicking and dragging the top of our clip. We can also set multiple speeds within a clip. Just find where we want to change the speed of the clip with our cursor. Then we'll use our speed blade tool to slice the clip, which we can also pull up with shift B. If we want to change the clip again, just choose our spot, blade the speed, and now we can change each part of the clip that we took the speed blade to independently. Notice how there are three distinct spots on the top of the retiming editor. If we choose this chunk of the clip, we can change it to automatic speed. Now when we play the clip back, it will automatically smooth out the speed transition or speed ramp the clip. If we zoom in a bit, we can see that there is a smooth transition between the speeds. We can adjust these transitions the same way we adjust normal transitions by stretching and shrinking. If you wish to have hard speed cuts, you can toggle this in the retime menu. Also hidden in the menu are presets for slow motion, fast motion, normal motion, and every other kind of motion. We can automatically speed ramp to or from zero, do an instant replay, automatically rewind the clip, jump cut at markers. This one is pretty much what it sounds like. You'll place a marker with the M key on your timeline and then the clip will jump forward a set number of frames at each marker. To round it out, there's video quality with normal leaving our clip alone, frame blending smearing our frames a bit, and optical flow trying to digitally smooth our footage to look as if it were shot at a higher frame rate. So with all this at our command, it's just a matter of what you want to do with it. Thanks for watching our slow motion video. If you want to know more about what we're talking about in the video, you can click on any of the links in the description, including a link to that awesome 1930s Chevrolet video that I showed. And also let us know what you thought in the comments down below. Leave your own slow motion shooting tips and tricks, and we'll see you in the next video.